Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here. Today we're going over lesson number three of our thyroid beginner series and today we're going to be talking about what I call T4 basics. Um, and so that's going to include T4 the test, T4 the medication, and T4 the hormone. And I think all of these things are critical to understanding your thyroid because of the central role that T4 plays in thyroid function. So let's talk about this. We'll break it up into sections um, and we'll make it nice and, and easy to understand so that you can everyone can stay on the same page here. So first of all, let's talk about T4 as a hormone. All right, and so T4 is uh, produced by the thyroid gland and I have an image here that you can look at. And so this image is uh, showing you the thyroid and it's showing you that T4 is produced directly from this gland. Um, forget some of this other stuff over here and on the sides, we'll just be focusing in on this image right here. So T4 is produced by the thyroid gland and about 80% of the hormone of thyroid hormone that your thyroid produces is T4. So the vast majority of thyroid hormone that is being produced by your thyroid gland is this hormone T4, which is why it's so important. Um, the, and then the other 20% about 20% or so, and this varies based off the individual, is the hormone T3. So 80 plus 20 obviously equals 100, and so that's the total amount of thyroid hormone that's being produced from your glands. But what is T4 truly? T4 is really considered an inactive hormone, okay? So even though it's the most abundant thyroid hormone that your body produces, it's inactive. And the only way for it to become activated is through a process called conversion where your body takes T4 and turns it into T3. And th this image talks a little bit about those conversion factors, but we're gonna have another lesson on that. So you can sort of just put that to the back of your head for now. But just realize that T4, the majority of the hormone that your thyroid produces is T4, and that hormone is inactive unless it's changed or modified and turned into T3. Which means that the 20% that your thyroid produces of the other hormone, T3, is the active thyroid hormone but the T4 by itself doesn't do much, okay? So just remember that because it's going to make sense as we talk about testing for it and then obviously as we talk about medication. So let's move, uh, switch gears a little bit to T4, the test. And I'll show you a, a couple of examples of um, what it looks like to test for T4. So T4 um, can be tested through routine blood work. And I'll show you an example right here. So this is thyroxin free, and thyroxin is just another name for T4. So if you have your labs in front of you, you can kind of look at that, and that will help you to determine what it is. And then this this particular patient, um, res this result is 1.17 with a reference range of 0.89 to 1.76. All right, and so you can you can test this, and your doctor should be checking this because if you listen to my previous video, you'll know that testing your thyroid when you are testing your thyroid, you should be looking for the the active hormones. Well, you should be looking for T4 and T3, but so active and inactive, really. But you should be looking at the hormones, not just the TSH. And the amount of hormone that's in your blood gives you an idea as to how much your thyroid gland is actually producing, right? So if we know, going back to this image, that your thyroid gland produces T4 when it's stimulated by TSH, if that T4 is low in your body, then you can kind of say, that, or you can make the assumption that the thyroid is unable to produce the amount that it should. And I have a, an example here that I can show you, which is right here. So this is a patient with Hashimoto's, and this is the TSH and the free T4 tested together. So you can see that the TSH is high, which is an indication that the thyroid is not producing enough hormone. And so you might think to yourself, well, if that were true, then we would expect we would expect the, the uh, T4 and T3 to be low, and that's exactly what we see here. So 0 0.7 indicating that the free T4 is low. So that's the value of checking T4. Now, a lot of doctors will just look at the TSH, but we talked about why that's a, probably not the best way to look at that. Um, so you really want to look at these two things together. And so what does it tell you? Well, it gives you an idea as to how well your body is producing uh, T4, but also how well is your body converting T4 into T3? So if you look and you have high amounts of T4 and low amounts of T3, then you can kind of make the assumption that it's probably not being converted act actively. 
All right, so that's sort of the basics there. And then lastly, if you are on thyroid medica medication, such as level thyroxine, which we're going to talk about in just a minute, then as you take that, your TSH should go down and your T4 should go up. So those are the things that you're looking for if you're taking medication. So let's talk about T4 medication because this is where I think things things get a little interesting. So we've talked about T4 as a hormone. We talked about T4 as the test. Now let's talk about T4, the medication. Now, most doctors use T4 as their medication of choice when treating thyroid disease. If you've watched the previous videos, you understand that. But what are T4? What are these T4 medications? Well, they're, they're known as Synthroid, Levothyroxine, Tyrosine, and Lavoxyl. And there's a bunch of other different kinds of brands, but those are the most common. And these medications contain the, the, uh, the hormone T4. That's it. They don't contain T3, even though... You remember, if we go back to the very first image we were talking about, your body produces 80% T4 and 20% T3. But when doctors, conventional doctors, they give you medication, they never give you back that T3. They only give you back that T4. And they do this because they feel that T4 uh, is a little bit safer to use in, because it has a longer half-life, which means that it stays in your body longer than T3. And they also, so that makes a little more sense, like let's say you skip a dose or whatever, fine, your levels are a little more stable. However, the problem is not many people do well um, just on T4 medication. And what they do is they hope by giving you that T4 that your body will then take it, remember we talked about this conversion, it will take the T4 that you're taking and your body will convert it on its own. They're hoping that this happens. The problem is this doesn't happen equally in all patients. There's a bunch of different factors, and this is where we'll talk about t the uh, conversion factors. That's going to be a, a lesson coming up. But there's a lot of different things that can change how effectively your body takes T4 and turns it into T3. And by the way, if it doesn't turn it into T3, then you're going to feel terrible because T3 is the active hormone. T4 is only there to act as a reservoir for that T4 to T3 conversion. And so in this way, it's possible for patients who are taking T4 thyroid medication, such as levothyroxine or Synthroid or Tyrosine or any of those, it's possible for, for those patients to have a completely normal TSH. Because remember, as you take TSH, it will go down. Or as you take T4, your TSH will go down. And yet, they still may maintain low levels of T3, which means they still remain, may remain symptomatic. So that's how this kind of all fits together here. But don't let it confuse you. T4 which is another name for thyroxine, you could, those are used interchangeably, is, is all three things. It's a hormone that your thyroid produces, it's a test that you can actually look for in your blood, and it's also a medication. And that, it's a good thing, but you need to understand that you separate these things in your mind so that when someone refers to T4, you know exactly what they're talking about. Well, that's it for, the, for number three. We're, just, we're talking about T4 today. Tomorrow we'll be talking about T3 to give you a better idea. And I think that's where things get really interesting because that's, that's how you can really start to feel better by using different types of medications and different combinations of medications. Because really what we want to do is we want to mimic what your own thyroid gland is doing in a healthy state. And if we know that your thyroid is naturally producing 80% T4 and 20% T3, doesn't it just make sense from a logical standpoint that we should replace your thyroid in that sort of ratio as opposed to just giving you a hundred percent t4 and assuming that it works well that's sort of that's sort of what i think and i think i can convince you that that is the case um, in future videos so if you have any questions leave them below um, otherwise i'll see you guys in the next one